QAQC programs have a lot of associated terminology that GOs that have been working for a long time take for granted. The aim here is to clarify the main terminology, but I want to stress that you should never be afraid to ask a question about a term if you're unfamiliar with it. A comprehensive QAQC program will have field duplicates, field blanks, standards, laboratory duplicates. The entire reason of conducting a QAQC program is to record failures when investigating the data. Determining the reasons for the failure is critical as you're making adjustments to the program. And remember, your lab is your partner, especially in the beginning of a program. It's important to work with them to work out these adjustments. Accuracy versus precision is a really important concept to grasp in your QAQC data. At right is a schematic that demonstrates samples that are accurate but not precise, precise but not accurate, not accurate and not precise, and both precise and accurate. Precision is the degree of agreement of an independent repeated measurements of the same parameter under prescribed conditions. Whereas accuracy is the closeness of agreement of independent repeated measurements of a measured value against a true or certified value. It's important to keep these concepts in mind when analyzing and reporting the QAQC for data. Contamination is equally important to keep in mind. It's typically achieved by submission of materials known of known element concentration, for example, reference materials and blanks, and by sample duplicates either analyzed at the same laboratory or at an alternate laboratory. For example, if you're working in a low sulfidation epithermal silver project and you're getting high silver values, this is exciting and great news for your investors. However, if you're running a tight QAQC program and you notice that your blank samples are also reporting high silver, then it's likely a contamination issue at the lab that needs to be addressed. The role of a reference material in chemical analysis is to assign traceability of the measurements back to a known standard. The selection of an appropriate certified reference material or reference material is a complex task, and it's recommended that an appropriate authority such as the geochemist be consulted. Reference materials typically only provide information about the analysis of the sample inclusive of digestion, if appropriate. They provide no information about the quality of collection and preparation of a sample prior to going forward for analysis. In practice, in the context of QAQC management, reference materials are used to control the degree of uncertainty associated with the measurement of an unknown and to monitor accuracy. So there's a few different types of reference material and it's crucial to understand the distinctions between them. First, you should just have a general reference material or an RN. This is a material or substance one or more of whose property values are sufficiently homogeneous and well established to be used for the calibration of an apparatus, the assessment of a measurement method, or for assigning values to materials. Internal reference material, or an IRN. This refers to a reference material and is used typically by a laboratory to analyze samples. While it's not certified, it's been analyzed sufficiently by the laboratory against primary reference materials to be used as a secondary reference material. Then you have the certified reference material, or the CRM. This is a reference material accompanied by a certificate, one or more whose property values are certified by a procedure that establishes its traceability to an accurate realization of the unit in which property values are expressed, and for which each certified value is accompanied by an uncertainty at a stated level of confidence. There are companies that specifically sell CRMs, and when you're at a trade show, go to their booths, and you can have a chat with them. These are certified for the elements or analytes being analyzed. They have been certified by an identical or comparable analytical technique, and they have a certified element or analyte concentrations appropriate for the range being determined. They should be matrix matched with the samples being analyzed, and just check to make sure they haven't expired be beyond its certification period, usually not applicable to solids unless they are degrading over time, for example, oxidation or absorption of water. Next one that we have are the matrix match certified reference materials or MMCRM. So as noted above, for a CRM to be appropriately used, it should have the same matrix as the unknown material being analyzed. So if you're looking at a diorite sample, you should be using diorite uh, CRMs. Um, so if appropriate consideration 
uh, should be given to the production materials through a commercial agent that's responsible for the preparation, homogenization, analysis, and certification. And the certification of such standards is also method match. So for instance, it's gonna say that it's it's also going to be, uh, for example, you have to use a 40, uh, four, uh, a four acid or an aqua regia. Um, so these things, just it's really important to keep in mind that your host rock has to be matrix matched to your CRM. So if your your CRM you're using is for a carbonate rock, it's not going to work appropriately if you're looking at something that has a matrix of say diorites or granites. Um, going further, if you're working at a mine, usually what tends to happen is instead of using a general um, CRM that you can get for over, say, over the counter, um, you would give them a lot of your materials. So you would give them, say, a low uh, matrix matched uh, grade, so like low copper grade, you give them moderate copper grade and a high copper grade. And so you're just creating all these different reference materials so that you're able to make sure that your program is as good as it can possibly be. The last one that you have here are the international certified reference materials. Um, this is a lesser used term, but it refers to commercially available theorems. So for example, if you guys have ever heard of NIST or SARM, um, really think analytical instruments like a microprobe. These are CRM or standards that you're using. If you're feeling overwhelmed or lost, that's okay. The selection of an appropriate a CRM or a reference material is actually really complex. And it's recommended that an appropriate authority such as geochemist is consulted when doing this. Sample blanks are defined as sample materials containing zero or negligible concentrations of the sought analytes. They give an indication of the level of contamination inherited in a sample, sample preparation, and the analytical procedure. Ideally, such levels should be negligible compared to the scale of the analytical results. In order to assess the level of contamination during a sample collection, preparation, and analysis protocol, it's important that the blanks are inserted in the QAQC program the earliest opportunity. Working in the fields, a lot of times you'll see people use some quartz aggregate as a blank material, but you can also order blank material um, from your CRM companies. I also want to point out that sample blanks should not be confused with either laboratory blanks. These are a full process analysis that lacks any sample material whatsoever. Um, as such, any values reported represent instrumental variation, background noise, poor calibration, contamination during dissolution. They give no indication of possible contamination during sample prep. Also, there's instrumental blanks, which is a clean solution, typically distilled water, dilute HCL or HNO3 that's analyzed on the instrument to typically determine whether the instrument is zeroed or rather on reading a solution with no significant content of the analyte being sought, it will report a concentration of zero. Finally, let's chat about duplicates. In general, a duplicate is defined as a second equal sample taken at any point in a sampling program where a subsample is taken from the greater whole. A field duplicate is taken at the earliest point in a sampling and analysis procedure. It should be independent of the original sample. Um, so it shouldn't be a single sample collected and split in two, two, but rather collected in the exact same matter as the original using the same practices and procedure. So for instance, if you're sampling a cabrata in the Atacama Desert in Chile, you would be taking, um, you know, digging, say, five holes to create your sample, and then you're going to be digging five equal holes to create your duplicate sample. The intention of the field duplicate is to assess the heterogeneity of the material sampled. In reality, the field duplicate is the accumulation of all the variability in a sample and what happens to the sample during and following collection, and in practice, it's the sum of all errors associated with material heterogeneity, sample collection procedure, sample prep errors, including splitting, segregation, and loss, digestion errors, and analysis errors. Unfortunately, the error associated with the sample collection procedure is probably the hardest to quantify. So for example, 
a biased sample collection process will always produce an equivalently based a biased field duplicate. And as a result of the nature of some sample types, it's not always possible to take field duplicates simultaneously and they have to be taken sequentially. So like I gave you before, some examples would be the collection of a second soil sample from a second hole within five to 10 meters of the first hole, a collection of a second random rock chip sample around the identical area, and a collection of a second sequential water sample from the same location in a river or a drill hole. Lastly, we have preparation duplicates or prep dupes. Subsequent to collection, many sample types undergo preparation prior to analysis. For example, crushing a drill core sample to a size that's appropriate for analysis. It's important to assess the level of reproducibility of the sample material after the crushing or size reduction. And when a duplicate is taken during sample reduction, it's important that the duplicate represents a perfect one-to-one -one split and that the duplicate is taken at the same time as the original. Examples of prep duplicates include the coarse crusher duplicates taken after the first splitting after crushing, a secondary crusher duplicate taken at the first split after crushing, pulp duplicates taken after pulverization of a sample by splitting the pulp into two or more aliquots. And here's just a, a picture of some coarse reject material, which is something that you'll often get back for, uh, from the lab. I hope this clarifies much of the QAQC jargon, and now you're ready to proceed towards interpreting your results.